Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all over the United States and around the world. Tonight, we're going to have some fun with a technique called retiform. Now, retiform, the definition of retiform is kind of like a grid or a netting. Um, it's kind of sectioning things off and creating some sort of net pattern or grid pattern. And we are going to do that tonight on a card. Now, you may have seen me do this before. I think I have about three Retiform videos on my channel. But um, I thought tonight I would do something a little bit different to the card. Normally, I stamp the images in multicolors. Tonight, I thought I'd stamp them in all one color, and I would add a little colored pencil to bring out the different parts of the images. So that's going to be a little fun tonight. Uh, but before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey. How are you feeling? Well, you know. <laughs> How's your lozenge? <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a week. So I'm still recovering from last week. I had a major cough, cough-a-thon. You really did. <laughs> Poor Gina had to tolerate me the whole week. It wasn't it wasn't so bad tolerating you the whole week. It's just I was so bored all week without you. <laughs> I can cough cough the deep end. <laughs> cough the wall. <laughs> Yeah, because usually like Friday, we relax and we have some food and we chit chat. And then Saturday, we ride bikes. And uh, we didn't get to do any of that this weekend. So I was just kind of doing housework. I was bored. So I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, and you even came up with the word of the day that we'll share later. <laughs> I did. I right. came up with the word of the with day. That theme. <laughs> yes, yes. So, well, dead space. All right. <laughs> Back to the dead space. Yes, I came up with the word of the day, and it was a word that I uh, came up with because it was something I was feeling. So Tom will share that a little bit later. Thank you. Yes, Rena cut my hair. She cut about four inches off of it, and uh, in two weeks, she's going to put highlights in it. Yeah, we were talking about it. My hair, actually, I don't know why it looks quite so dark here, but if you ever catch my little... Um, videos right before I go live. You can see it's got a lot of red in it when the light hits it, but I think I just have light coming this way and I'm up against a white background. And my Sicilian color, this is this is actually the color hair that I, it's not, I color my hair obviously, but this is the color hair I was born with. So it's just the same color as if you had known me 20 years ago. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you so much. I, uh, I appreciate all your kind words. I really do. So let's get started on tonight's technique. So to begin, I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock down to three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. Now, if you want to use Master Layouts 1 for this, that will give you the exact measurement that I'm doing tonight for my card. And I thought that I would make a Father's Day card. So, Tom, try not to look with both of your eyes because this card <laughs> is coming your way. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought I would make a Father's Day card tonight, but... Um, I don't know that I'll give away this card that I make tonight. I might give away something different or whoever the winner is, I might just give you the choice because you might not want a Father's Day card. You might want something a little more fun and, uh, you know, something you can keep in your craft room. So this might be a little bit too specific. All right. So to do the retiform technique, what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of card stock. Let me see if this one will work. Yeah, this one should work. So I have a quarter sheet of cardstock here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a V pattern on this card in this direction. Now, you can make your V as skinny and wide or thin, however you want it to be. But I am going to 
Let's see, let me get my ink stand here and I'm going to use some craft ink for this. Cause again, this is gonna be a Father's Day card. And I think it's important that we do some masculine feeling cards every now and then because, hey, that's a big part of my card making list and I'm sure it is for you guys too. All right, so we're gonna start right here and I'm going to just angle this piece of cardstock like this. And then I'm going to use my blending brush and I'm going to hold on to the cardstock. Now, if you feel like you can't get a good grip on the cardstock, then just take a little bit of your dot runner tape and just tape it to the piece of cardboard or the piece of cardstock that you're working on. And then this way you can turn this cardstock around, but it's not going to slip out from under this little grid uh, maker that you're going to use. Okay. So, I'm going to hold this right here and I'm going to start with a little bit of craft ink and I'm going to go right on the line here. I'm going to create a little bit of an edge. Now I'm using craft, so my lines are going to be very light, but you can also go way darker if you want by using browns and navies and fresh asparagus. But there's my first line. Now for my second line, I want this line to kind of come that way. So I'm making kind of a V. See what I'm saying there? Okay. So I'm going to place my cardstock again. And I'm going to do something similar on the other side. Now I've done this in the past with sponge daubers. So it's kind of fun to do this with um, a blending brush. Now, one thing about this that I want to tell you, see right here, um, if you have a lighthouse stamp, this is also a really cool way to get a beam. So if you stamp your lighthouse, you can do the same kind of thing with yellows and golden colors, and you can create a, a beam of light coming off of the lighthouse. So that's just a little quick tip. All right, and I am gonna actually place this piece of cardstock right here like that. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of color right there, just a little bit, because I wanna just make it a not so stark white. You don't have to do this part, but this is a very white piece of cardstock. So if you were using ivory, it might be a little bit more subdued. All right, so now my next step is to create another pattern and I'm gonna do this kind of coming this way. I'm gonna make my V kind of wide this way. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing again. And it's okay if you overlap. In fact, you wanna overlap there because you kind of wanna sharpen that edge as well. All right, like that. And now, I'm gonna do something similar over here, right here like this. And I'm not worrying about getting it perfectly straight or perfectly even. In fact, you don't wanna get it perfectly straight or perfectly even. You wanna create these segments. Now, if you want more segments, it's easy to create more. You can just use some post-it notes and you can block off certain areas like this. So this way you could add another segment in here. You could kind of divide this up like that and make a few smaller segments. Like that. Okay. So I think that looks pretty good. We've got a lot of segments here, but one thing that I don't like is these are nice and tan, but these are very stark white. So I wanna even that out a little bit. And the best way to even that out is to go around the perimeter and just bring that color in a little bit. So I'm gonna start over here, bringing the color in. See how that kind of makes it blend a little bit more, but it doesn't ruin the line. So I'm kind of going up and I'm continuing my blending even on the areas that are already blended. And I would just add those extra segments if you had like way too much space left and it just looked too stark in a certain area. 
I actually like the way this grid is looking. It's very interesting. Okay. Okay, so now I have my grid. So now I'm gonna choose a color to stamp some images. Now the images that I wanna stamp are all very detailed images that normally you would color, but we're not gonna color them. For example, this stamp set is called Beautiful Wings by Melanie Menchinger. And because I'm making this a little bit more of a masculine card, I'm choosing this one because these are moths and not butterflies. Not that it really matters because flowers and leaves and butterflies and they, they don't have gender. I mean, everybody loves everything. But for some people, some guys might say, well, I don't want a flower card. So you want to do something that has a little bit more of a masculine feel to it. So a dragonfly might feel a little more masculine than a butterfly. And here's the autumn silhouette stamp set. A leaf might feel a little bit more masculine than a flower. And then again, instead of a butterfly, I'm going to use Melanie's brand new set called Fearless Liars. You know what I called this this morning, Tom? Was I was checking inventory on this because I hate to use stamp sets that people get upset if they're sold out. And I asked Carol in the back, I said, um, how many frequent flyers do we have? <laughs> <laughs> it's not frequent flyers. They're fearless flyers. And so all of these are great for coloring to adding just a little bit of color, but you don't need to add a lot. So that's why I'm going to use these. And then for my greeting, I thought I would use this set by Beth Saleka. This is the new one called grand gentleman. And I thought I would use husband and maybe do best husband ever. I would say my favorite husband, but that indicates in some way that I have more than one and I do not. So, <laughs> but you could also, you know, do Father's Day, um, happy Father's Day, husband. You could do a lot of different things here. So, I like to make my cards just a little bit more generic, but I still love that we have a masculine set for uh, greetings like that. So now we're gonna use some um, post-it notes and you can use these big post-it notes if you want or these small ones. And we're going to segment off, section off, section off a segment of this by placing these post-it notes right along the lines that we created doing that ink blending. So I'm gonna turn it this way because I seem to be able to see it from the bottom better. Okay. And now we're gonna pick our first uh, image to stamp. And I think the first image that we're gonna stamp is one of these beautiful birds from, uh, I wanted to say frequent flyers again, fearless flyers. So I could stamp this eagle. I could stamp this one. This kind of feels like a dove to me. I love this bird here. I think I'll do this one because it's got a lot of area there that I can color. All right. So I'm going to grab this stamp and put it on an acrylic block. Let me see if I have a smaller block for that close by. I think I do. Okay. You should have a frequent flyer stamp set. <laughs> we really should. <laughs> now, you're going to see that Obviously, this does not fit into this area perfectly, and that's what you want. You want your image to be a little bit bigger than the space that you have. That's what's going to create this really cool pattern. Now, I'm going to use charcoal brown as my ink for all of this. Get that nice and inky. And then I'm going to make sure that I get his face in there, but I'm going to press the rest of that. And you want to put a little bit of extra pressure on the block because you want it to sink down past the post-it note. Okay. So there's my first image and I'm going to peel this back and you can see how cool this looks because he is tucked into that square. Should I zoom in just a little bit? Yes. Very okay. cool. Isn't that fun? Okay. All right, so now we're gonna segment off another area. I keep saying segment off, but I think I should say section off. I'm gonna section off another area and you can reuse these post-it notes. So I'm gonna put one here. I have to put one here, see that? And then I have to put one here 
but you can keep reusing these post-it notes. I think the most you're going to need is four. Okay, so we did a bird. So we have something with wings. So maybe we'll do something leafy next. I'm going to clean this off. And we're only going to use each image one time. So this is an opportunity to grab a variety of stamp sets out of your collection and really go to town. So let's use this leaf right here. Or should we use this one? Maybe even this one. Hmm. I'll use this one here. This one. I'm getting yelled at for looking. What's that? I'm getting yelled at for looking. You were looking? At the stamp, at the card. Oh, <laughs> yeah, try not to look, okay? All right, so now I'm going to ink up this leaf. And then I'm going to stamp that. And I'm going to have like part of the stem going off onto the post-it note. Okay. And then again, we're going to peel these post-it notes off. And now we've got that image. All right, so over here, let's put some kind of little insect, shall we? So I'm gonna spin this around because again, I can see this better. Like that. Yes, I mean, I, I know that they they you probably have seen this done before and it's, it's interesting. I'm gonna use a new one because I really pressed hard on that and it bled through a little bit and I don't wanna ruin my design. I can still use that post-it note again. I just want it to dry a little bit. So I'm not wasting it. I'm just putting it aside. Okay, so I want to use one of the bugs here. I think I could do this one and I could do it twice. So let me show you what, I'm, what I mean. You can take a, a section and do it more than once. So let me clean this one. Alrighty. And then we'll get that in here. So we'll have a little bit of them coming in here like this. And then I'll just get a little bit of his wings over here. Like that. Okay. So pull that off. coming out pretty cool, huh? It's really fun. And it's a great way to just kind of go through your craft room and see what stamps haven't I given a lot of love to. Sometimes you buy a stamp set because it's got a big flower that you love, but it's also got some smaller detailed flowers that you just don't use very often. This is a great way to get those into your stamping action. All right. So I'm going to pick another one now. I'm going to pick a bird again. I'm trying to alternate birds, the birds and the bees. I could have used the beautiful bees set. That would have been a good one too. So you could use beautiful bees. You can use, oh, there's so many. Um, let's see. Let's should we put that eagle in here. Let's put the eagle in. Like the eagle. And you don't have to fill up the entire box. I'm going to use a bigger block for this one. You don't have to fill up the entire box if you don't want to. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Are the grid lines of your block on the bottom or the top? They're on the top right here. But when I'm using the grid lines to, to measure something or to, you know, straighten something out like a greeting, I put them on the, on the bottom. But for this, I just slap the stamp on there. And this technique is called retiform? Retiform or retiform. R-E-T-I-F-O-R-M. Okay. So there we go. Now I can put my greeting down here if I want, or I might do my greeting panel separately. I haven't decided yet. So I'm going to work up here a little bit while I'm deciding where I want that greeting to go. So up here, I think I could use another bird. Yeah, 
Yeah, and you know, you're exactly right. Um, you can use this technique for any kind of stamp. So you could segment it off like this and you could do it in a bright color and you could do neon funky flowers all over it. It doesn't have to be realistic images. It doesn't have to be detailed images. I think it looks really cool with these kinds of images, but it certainly doesn't have to be. All right, so which bird should I use next? There's so many beautiful ones here. How about if I use this one where it's kind of flying in a different direction? I'll use this one. Actually, the way I've got the whole thing twisted and turned around, I don't even know which direction anything is in right now. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, Sherry, a hot air balloon would be beautiful. Any kind of like um, vintage style stamps, like some of Tim Holtz stamps would be really cool. Anything that's kind of old fashioned and looks antique. It's just a different style of stamping. You guys know me, I do a lot of clean and simple stamping. I like a real graphic style. Um, so I don't necessarily do a lot of this kind of thing but it's so cool. And I'm gonna color these. So this is gonna really change things quite a bit. So let's put a leaf in the center. Now this is where you're gonna need four post-it notes, just for this one. I think these are gonna be okay. And let's pick, um, let's pick this long leaf. We'll do this one in here. Or we could do the, let's do this one. No matter what I say I'm going to do first, you know that's not the one I'm going to do. <laughs> I, have a, I have a problem with that. <laughs> so anybody getting storms tonight? I heard there was some hail happening. I don't know. I, we might get some, Tom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> Time to pop another cough drop. Can you eat too much of these? Too many? Uh, I think you can. Have you been like on nonstop with them all day? I think so. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. I might actually do my greeting. I may not even do a Father's Day card. <laughs> Well, let's see here. I could do husband down here. Hmm. How about if I do that? If I do husband down here and I do best and ever. I think I'll do that. Because I do want to give this card to you, Tom, even if you've seen it. always do it this way too but I kind of like the way this eagle looks so I'm gonna just stamp husband here I love the the hand lettered look of this stamp set oh my goodness it's gorgeous so we'll put husband here and then Let's get, we'll put ever. <laughs> this is gonna be a little backwards the way I'm gonna stamp this, but I wanna make sure everything fits. We're gonna stamp ever. This is scary. And then I'm gonna put best. This is for you, Tom. There's so many great combinations you can make with this set too. There we go. Best husband ever. Now we're still gonna fill in these other blocks. But what we're gonna do is we're still gonna segment them off. 
at least in the areas where we need to, for example, up here, and then over here. And then let's use a dragonfly here. Let me find one. And we could use a, I wanna use one that's too big, but I'll use this one here. And we'll just make sure that it doesn't go over the word husband. I like this dragonfly. I think dragonflies are really, really pretty. Even real ones. That's like one bug that I'm not terrified of. <laughs> the one bug. So we can do that right here. <laughs> See, so that's not getting in the way of that greeting. Yeah, I like this dragonfly too. Melanie hand draws all of these on paper with a pen or a pencil. Can you believe it? She doesn't use anything digital. I think she's one of our few artists that draws with a pen. My daughter Alicia draws with a pen, but she draws on her iPad. Okay, let's put another bug here, and then we'll do a bird right here. I love the birds. Gotta use another bird. Okay, so we'll get, we could do a leaf up here. Let's do a leaf up here, and then another bird down here. Oh, I'm glad you guys like these images. Okay. So I said leaf, right? So let's go with, we haven't used this one yet. This is a chunky one, but it's got some open space in there. There we go. I love how rustic all of these images look too. All right, and then we need one more, and we're gonna do another bird. And you can also use um, Melanie's Beautiful Birds. That's a great set, too, to use. Beautiful bees, beautiful butterflies. I'm only picking these images because I feel like they're just a hair more masculine. But again, if you have somebody that's an avid gardener and they love, um, I want to see something here. I don't think I've used this real big one yet, so I'm going to use that, but I'm going to just check because I don't, yeah, I haven't used this one because it's going in the opposite direction. Yeah, if you have somebody that's an avid gardener, uh, obviously flowers are beautiful for anybody. Tom and I did enjoy our flowers this weekend. We sat outside on our patio and we were smelling all of the lilacs. They're really coming around right now. I have a tree in my yard called a Miss Kim lilac tree. It's a lilac tree. And it has like a little ball head <laughs> that is all lilacs and then it's got a skinny little trunk. And I posted a picture of it on my Instagram and Facebook stories. Okay, so there we go. There's our bunch of different little images here. now. Let's color some of these in. So one of the colors that I thought would look good is this turquoise, the muted turquoise. We could color all the birds turquoise just to add a little bit of color and that will create some distinction between them. And I did try to keep the birds not touching each other and the bugs not touching each other and the leaves not touching each other. This way, if we go with three different colors, that will create quite a different, uh, a different you know variation to your eye now of course an eagle normally isn't turquoise but we're going with it tonight and i am gonna color this and then i'm gonna blend it a little bit with um gamsol and i'm not really worrying about coloring every little detail i'm just gonna smooth out the color with gamsol actually giving it quite a bit of color here. 
and then we'll smooth it out with some Gamsol. So I have a blending stump here. Now you could also just pick a really, really pale Copic marker and just color it in with that. It'll give you the same kind of look. I'm just picking colored pencils here because they're close by. So I'm just going to blend that out a little bit with some Gamsol. Do this one down here and you can see I'm not doing a whole lot of coloring I'm not worrying about blending I just want to create a two-tone look this is deceptive because you can still see the wing here so that's a little deceptive that's gonna go away I'm just smoothing out that color I might add a little more to this guy. And remember, I am using the Gina K Designs dye ink. So you can color with Gamsol on any of our colors of dye ink, which is really nice. It doesn't smear at all. It does look like an old colorized photo. Jan, you're right. And this is just a very soft color, gives it kind of that antique -y feel. You know, it wouldn't make sense to do it in a bright, bright pink. Kind of the blues and the greens. Gosh, birds are pretty. I've been trying to notice things more. Do you guys, are you trying to do that too now that... The warm weather's here. I know some of you live in beautiful climate all the time, but we don't. And I'm trying to notice how just sweet everything is. The little birds going about their business and bunnies running around the yard and stuff. It's so sweet. I was coming to work today, Tom, and there were um, turkeys running across the road. Wild turkeys, four of them. Must have been like two couples or something. Mm -hmm. And one really just puffed up its tail. It was like mad at the cars going by. I was so worried. <laughs> I am leaving a little bit of white on his belly there. Okay. I had no idea until I moved out to Wisconsin. I'm from Philadelphia. I had no idea there were wild turkeys. I don't know what I was thinking. Like that... <laughs> <laughs> like that with certain animals didn't exist outside of the food industry or something. It's ridiculous. I'm like, wait, there's wild turkeys. But then I thought about it and I thought, Gina, that's really stupid. I mean, every animal <laughs> is wild. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not a farm girl. Okay. I might add a little bit to his beak here. Yes, it was Calhoun and coffee. That's exactly. Were, were you, was I behind you? <laughs> That's exactly what roads I was on. <laughs> okay, so now my birds are done. You can see the little bit of shading we have there. Now, I'm going to use a green for some of the leaves, even though these are much more autumn-y leaves, but this is a very subdued green. It's called, how do you say this, Tom? Is it Keladon green or celadon green? It's C E L A D O N. What do you think? I have no idea. Okay. Well, I'm going to, well, that's it. I'm going with whatever I just said. <laughs> so I'm going to color down the center of these leaves and just work that color out toward the edges. And remember, be careful not to like cross over to the next segment. Somebody will know. We had a, there was a um, troll you got to get. Did you see that? Down just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I'm using the same blending stump because that blue is so pale and this green is so pale.
I think I'm going to add a little bit more. You think that green is different enough? I think it is, but let me just look at some of my other greens here because it might not be bad to add just a little touch of a darker green in here. This is Kelly Green, one of my colors I go to all the time. But you know what I'm going to have to do now? I'm going to have to do them all with both colors. <laughs> it's all right, though. This is just, it's a little yellower green. That other one was kind of blue, and it looked so much like the blue. There we go. I think you can see that a little better. This is called a blending stump, Lori. It is made by Creative Mark, and it's paper. It's pressed paper. And I'm dipping that into my Gamsol. My Gamsol is in here, and Gamsol comes in a bottle that looks like this. And Gamsol blends waxy pencils. I have lots of videos on Gamsol. I do Gamsol quite a bit. So you can always go over to my channel. And when you get to my channel, especially if you're using a desktop, but if you're not, like if you're watching on a TV or you're what, looking on your phone, just type in Gina K Gamsol and you'll get a million videos of mine that where I teach Gamsol and I go through the whole thing and, you know, what you should use and how to use it. You're getting a little bit of it today, but um, I'm not doing a lot of Gamsol explaining today because I was focusing more on the Rediform technique today. But if you're new to Gamsol, Gamsol is a very fun blending medium for colored pencils. You don't use it for watercolor pencils because that's what water does for watercolor pencils. This is used for waxy pencils and the pencils I'm using are the Prismacolor pencils. Just the Pr Prismacolor Premier pencils. Yes, yeah, some of the stores sell them individually so you can just pick the colors you want. You don't have to get a whole set. It's really not necessary to get a whole set. If you have full set syndrome, then I highly recommend you get the full set because the full set is cheaper than buying the individual colors. However, there are a lot of pencils in the set. Like, I don't know. Who knows how many pencils are in the, the big set? Like uh, 200 or something. And you might only need 12 pencils. So you can just pick the colors that you think you would use the most and the nice thing about using Gamsol is you don't need a light green and a dark green to do a blend. You only need one green and then you blend that green out to a lighter color using the Gamsol. So that's if you if you like the Gamsol technique. If you don't, then you definitely need to use um, two colors to get a two color blend like that. I kind of like the green being a little bit more vibrant. Yeah, that kind of sepia tone in there, right? It's nice. Just blending that out a little bit more so it's not too green. And then I need one more color for these little bugs. I feel like I could just lightly do a little bit of these wings in here, even without Gamsol, just real light pencil. Just to add a little color, because that's a big image. Same here with this guy, just a little light blending. I mean, a little light shading, not much, but just enough to add a little color there. Okay, so these guys, what color should I use? Someone wants to know what pencil sharpener I use. Lynn, I see you. <laughs> I use the um, Eye Point Orbit by Westcott. This is the battery operated one. I also have um, an electric one. I use the electric one more at home when I'm just sitting stationary and I can plug it in. This is the one I use and I take with me. I have not changed the battery and I don't know how long. Um, and it just works and it's great to throw in your bag. In the early years, I used a pump. Yes, I did use a pump. So the pump that I used was a Menda pump. And they are mostly used in the medical field, in the beauty industry. And I came from the beauty industry, so I was using a Menda pump. Um, I don't use it anymore because I like to actually take my Gamsol with me. And so I just put a little bit into a jar and I keep my bottle because you can't really travel with a Menda pump. It will spill. But 
you can still get them on Amazon. So you could give that a try. I'm, I'm feeling like I want to use a purple, but I don't really want to use a purple. I think maybe a slate color. I want to stick with, I don't want to go with too many colors, even maybe like a gray. If I was going to use, how about like a gray like this one? I think this will be a good color. This is called 50% Cool Gray. I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. I just don't want it to be like too colorful. It can get out of hand quick, quickly. So I'm going to just add a little bit of gray, kind of keeping that subdued. But any gray will work. It doesn't have to be 50% cool gray. It could be 30% warm gray. It could be whatever gray you have. Or it could be bright purple if that's what you prefer. Okay, so I need to get another blending stump here. All right. And then I'm just going to blend that down just to fill that in a little bit. I should do a little gray on his body there too. I'm gonna add a little more gray. All right, Tom. So why don't you tell them my word of the day? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, as we said, Gina had to kind of tolerate me um, having coughing spells and being sick this week. And, and then you were living in the basement. Yeah. So, so you know, we usually, on our days off, we go for a bike ride or plan things out and have a really kind of full day, right? Full day. Full day. And so she was kind of stuck just out there by trying herself. To, trying to decide what to do. So where, like the word dilemma, where you're kind of in a quandary, you're not sure what to do. Um, this was a dull lemma. Dull. <laughs> a dull lemma where you just, either way you go, you're going to be bored. <laughs> A dull lemma. <laughs> so that's the word of the day, a dull lemma. <laughs> when you're stuck in the house with somebody sick and you have to kind of keep busy. That's my word. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there we go. I've added a little bit of that gray. So I used cool gray 50%. I used muted turquoise. And then I did a combination of Keladon Green and Kelly Green. No so, COVID, though. Three COVID tests. Three COVID tests. <laughs> okay. So now, I'm going to pull that off there. Now I think I'm going to mount it. Do I dare not use black today? Mm, here's what it would look like on black. Right, there's the little black edge. I do think it makes it pop, but I will try it on some charcoal brown just to make everybody feel better. Here it is on charcoal brown. So what do you guys think? You like it on charcoal brown or black? Okay, browns are, are, are in the lead. All right, brown, brown, brown. Nobody's picking black. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's go with the charcoal. Okay, a couple people said black. But we're going to do the brown, and nobody in the world will know that this is a Gina K Designs card because there's no black. Somebody said on my YouTube, YouTube channel, I get some crazy comments on my YouTube channel. Somebody said on my YouTube channel, girl, why do you use black on every card? Mix it up a little bit. And all I could think is, oh my gosh, this is a new person. <laughs> they don't know who I am because everybody knows that black is my thing. Okay, so I'm going to use the charcoal brown by popular demand. My tape runner is almost out. I'm being very conservative. Okay, 
Here we go. Now, I don't know that I cut this perfectly because I did not use my master layouts one. So I'm going to try to get a little thin hair off the bottom there. Let's see what I can do. That's good. Okay, now for card base here for this, I love the natural look of it. I really do. I just, I love it. Um, and I feel like if I put it on a craft card base, that would be very pretty. It really would look very pretty on a craft card base. Very neutral and warm. But I have to try it on an ocean mist card base just to see what it looks like. Now, when you put it on ocean mist, all of, see how that blue just pops right out? All of a sudden you see all the blue. But if I go back to the craft, kind of like the craft better, but I saw somebody say, it went by really fast, try ivory. And I'm gonna do that. We get an ivory piece here. I think you might be the winner with ivory. So here's the ivory. And you can see the drastic difference between ivory and white. Here's a white piece. Can you see that difference? Yes. Yeah. It's all very bright, but but I think ivory for the win. Do I have any? Let's see. Okay. I'm going to cut this. This is very thick cardstock. This is our 120 pound ivory. So when you're when you're putting a score line in cardstock this thick, if you ever get a cracked edge what you want to do is you want to let me zoom out a little bit i can only imagine how big this is for um people watching on a big screen so you want to you don't want to just do that and think that that's going to work it's not going to work you want to use the side of your tool the side here not the point because you don't want to dig in too deep so use the side of your tool and then you want to score several times, putting nice pressure, but really kind of digging that divot in there. Then once you get that, then you fold away from the score line and then you will not get any cracking because this is our 120 pound ivory and you can see there's no cracking at all. It's very smooth. So let's see what the ivory looks like. Oh, that does look really pretty. I do like that. So I'm up in the air because I like all three of them, honestly. So here's the ivory again. We'll take a look at the ocean mist again. I love the ocean mist, but I feel like it takes away from the vintage feel of it. It makes it a little bit too bright, although it's really pretty. It's kind of cool and modern. And then the craft is just so rustic. So Tom, which one do you like the best? I think I like the ivory. You like the ivory? Tom likes the ivory the best. Well, it is going to be your card. So if you like the ivory, I'm going to make the ivory for you. I cut that very nicely. Okay. So we'll put it on ivory for Tom. It does really make everything stand out. So let's go with the ivory because it's Tom's card. It's his call. It lets everything breathe. Is that how, is that what it does? <laughs> I gotta change my tape runner now. It, it allows, it does kind of just fade in and, you know, allows the colors and everything to kind of show. Okay. Let me just put this back together here. There we go. Did I put that back right? I, pretty close. There we go. Okay, Tom, it's your card. You get to pick. So there we go. There is the finished card. Now, I'm not going to give this card away tonight. I'm going to give away a card that I made for last weekend's five-minute card video. I wanted to show it to you up close. 
If you didn't watch this video, you might want to watch it. This is a really super fun little card that I made. And I just used our Mega Flower stencil and I did a little bit of rainbow here. And I thought this would be a fun one to give away tonight because whoever wins this card, this is this is something you might want to keep, you know, put it up in your craft room or whatever, or send it off to somebody else. This would be a kind of hard card to send off to somebody else. Wow, we got the trolls tonight, don't we? So let's we'll put this card in the mix, but we're going to give away this one tonight. All right, Tom, I know we've got 10 minutes left, but I don't have enough time to do a whole other Rediform <laughs> card. So let's give away this, this one tonight. All right. All right. Here we go. So who's getting the beautiful rainbow card? <laughs> the rainbow card goes to Judy Schmidt. Judy Yay, Schmidt. Yay, Judy. Congratulations, Judy. Just send your name and address to info at geniekdesigns.com and tell them you won the rainbow floral card and I will get this card out to you. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this ready form technique and I hope that you'll give this a try. Super easy to do. You can do it with all different kinds of images. Do bright ones, do you know, rustic ones like this. Post your cards that you make with your Gina K Design stamps in our group at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. We'd love to have you come and join the group. Tom, we had a milestone today. We did. Yes, we did. We turned over to 38,000 members in our group. Ooh. I think we're the busiest card making group on the web and Facebook. That's pretty fun. So thank you all so much for being part of that group. We love to see you. We love to see what you make. And I started something new this morning. I am randomly picking a card from years ago on my phone. I have all like 10 years of cards <laughs> since I started, since I got my first iPhone. They're all on my phone. I just keep moving them from phone to phone. And I'm randomly picking a card and sharing it in the group. And it always correlates with an old Stamp TV video. So um, that's kind of fun. In the morning, I'm looking for an old card to post. And uh, maybe it'll inspire you to make a card too. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Tom and I will be back on Thursday for another Crafternoon live session at noon central time. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five-minute card video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.